Good evening, everyone, and happy Wednesday. It is December 11, 2013. Hope you all had a beautiful day. Thanks so much for joining us here tonight. Soul Journeys Radio on AmericanFreedomRadio.com. If you would like to join us for the text chat tonight, that's over at Soul Journeys Radio. Dot com And any questions or comments, please feel free to give us a call tonight at 218-339-8525. That's 218-339-8525. Our special guest tonight is Andrew Norton Weber. He is the founder of AquariusTheWaterBearer.com, which is a storehouse of information, uh, everything you would like to know about distilled water and urine therapy um, with tons of testimonials and information by doctors and uh, so-called experts <laughs> and all of that good stuff, um, as well as uh, poisonous salts and, you know, just kind of uh, shedding the myths that uh, we've been told about distilled water, urine, salt, etc. So he's also uh, been the one that inspired me to start my urine therapy experiment uh, when we had him on last month, I guess 30 days ago. And um, although I have to admit, I didn't make it the entire, I didn't do 30 days in a row because, you know, holidays and travel and friends and I ate junk food a few times, but I am logging my experiment. So we'll definitely talk about that. But I know a lot of you are like, ew, why would you drink your pee? Well, you know what? We're going to find out here tonight. So Andrew, thank you so much for joining us here again. How are you doing? I'm doing great. It's a pleasure to be back after 30 days of watching your wonderful process, evolution, and showmanship. (laughs) (laughs) It has been fun and interesting and weird and just, oh my gosh, all sorts of emotions, really. Um, I mean, I guess I can kind of talk about that now. Um, as I don't know if you've been watching all of the videos. I started off, I think I did a daily video, like the first day of day. Chris here hanging out. And, and then I just decided, well, you know, that's What's this thing you guys are calling a waste drive of space? Talk. Drive a car is a system that burns how you drive and replicates it online. It takes the power of the cloud. It's always learning and creating this virtual and version really of you. So even if I'm offline, you can still race against me. Absolutely. You never have to race. Okay, wait. All right. It just went away. Okay. I don't know if they were hearing us twice or whatever. Okay. So yeah, once I um, was able to get over the mind trap of like, oh my gosh, I'm drinking my pee. You know, it was all good. The first day was really, really hard just to get myself to do it. Um, The second day, I kind of tried to force myself. Um, I'm not a morning person at all. Let's just get that out of the way right now. And, you know, how do we learn what works for us is just by trying everything. So some people say drink your first morning. Some people say, oh, drink it later in the day. You know, and I figured the second day I would get up, pee, and just shove it down right away. (laughs) That didn't work very well. (laughs) So Mm -hmm. I'm not doing that again. Uh, And in my first, uh, say, week or week and a half, I mixed it with juice. I mean, I tasted it and I pulled with it, but I wasn't just ready to start chugging pee, you know. Um, (laughs) I'm sure y'all can understand. But by the third day, it was like, wow, this is like good, which was also weird, you know, for my mind to comprehend. (laughs) Like I didn't know which was weirder, more weird, drinking my pee or uh, drinking my pee and liking it. And that's, <laughs> so that's kind of where I stand today, actually. Um, I have, I, I like it. Um, sometimes it's like tutti frutti. Sometimes it's kind of nutty. Sometimes a little salty. Sometimes a little sweet, but it's really just water. It's just water. That's all. And, you know, as far as like the benefits that I have experienced so far, 
And I'm super shocked, Andrew, and anyone listening, I just have to say, I really wasn't expecting this because I went into, I mean, I I already healed myself from, you know, everything else, whatever, not in a wheelchair, blah, blah, blah. And I, I didn't really think I had anything to heal from, but again, you know, I, I wanted to see what the hype was all about and if it would do anything for me. And I'm pretty convinced it's doing a lot for me. Um, now I'm up to between four and six cups a day. I don't really measure it, but sometimes I only pee like about a cup and sometimes it's, you know, three cups at a time, I guess, depending on how long I'm holding it in. So that's where I'm at now. And I'm actually chugging it. I'm not mixing it with juice. And I have experienced like, oh my God, off the hook, increased amounts of energy. Um, And my sleep is really good too. Once I finally do get to sleep, because (laughs) my mind kind of, you know, I like to think about a lot of things and use my anal eyes and all of that. But I just feel like ideas, creativity, intuition, dreams, all of that have been amplified. And, um, yeah, I don't know if I can think of anything else. I am. I've also um, bathed with it a few times. I have put it on my face and skin a little bit here and there, and I've also been uh, washing my hair and pooling with it occasionally. So, um, and I do feel, I've been doing an oil pooling experiment for the last few months, which I've experienced tremendous results, but I honestly have to say in the last few weeks, my teeth, I think, are way whiter. There was more of an improvement in the color in the last you know, month than there was doing just the oil pulling previously. So um, that's the good stuff. Okay, let me tell you the bad stuff. <laughs> I um, The first week or two, somewhere around there, a week and a half or something, and as you mentioned, detox, uh, detox symptoms, healing crisis or whatever, we've done those shows and videos, so I don't want to waste too much time on that, but a lot of it you know, has to do with emotions, um, because as you're cleansing your body, you are also cleaning out the cells that are harboring whatever suppressed emotions um, were stored there. So I I did have kind of a few, um, okay, a lot, (laughs) crying spells and just (laughs) you know, crying myself to sleep and crying when I wake up and like, oh my God, you know, life sucks and, you know, those types of pains. So I do attribute that to the um, detox process of the urine therapy. And now that that's all gone, and even during that, I still, I had increased energy from day one, but now it's like off the hook. You can't shut me up. You can't slow me down for anything. So... (laughs) Oh, I thought that's how you were before. No, I was a crazy bitch before, but... Oh. <laughs> wow. Yeah, now it's, um, yeah, off the hook. So there you go. That was my experience. <laughs> Let me ask you, Andrew, does any of that sound normal in your experience? Yes, it sounds uh, wonderfully online. And, uh, I mean... That's it right there. And you sound like you were well hydrated and, and keep yourself. It sounds like you're keeping yourself well hydrated because you're having consistently uh, good tasting pee. And that's, yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, drinking your pee will definitely keep you honest. I mean, I, I try to, I'm, I'm always drinking water. I never leave home without it. I always have water bottles with me here at my desk, next to my bed, in my purse, in my car. I mean, that's what I drink, water and fresh juice, and that's it. Um, but there was a couple days uh, when I had some friends in town visiting that I probably didn't drink as much, and I definitely tasted the difference. So, yeah, it just caused me to really, you know, just drink that water, just keep it down. And so I'm drinking more and more. And, uh, yeah, it it does taste good. I think, you know what, a couple times that I thought it tasted a little bit um, bitter or maybe even like a taste of blood. I don't know. 
And I wasn't bleeding, by the way, but I did uh, watch some documentaries and do some more reading and then finding out what urine really is. Of course, we're all taught that it's like lymphatic waste or whatever, but isn't it just really uh, the, the watery part of your blood plasma? You tell us. What did you find out? <laughs> That's what I found out. <laughs> I guess I forget the, the doctor's name, but I guess he... Um, uh, uh, whatever, drew blood or something and then let it sit for a day and then the blood separates. You have the, the darker, you know, stuff on the bottom of the tube or whatever it's called. And then it was all watery serum on the top. And so that's what I attributed the mild bloody taste a couple times too. So I, I just figured that, Oh, I got to drink more water. <laughs> what do you think, Andrew? Um, yeah, I think generally bitterness is either um, a source of uh, dehydration or um, certain cooked foods make it. Uh, how much uh, cooked or raw percentage even has it changed your diet at all? Well, no, not re my diet. I'm pretty happy with my diet. Um, my typical diet is I juice all day. And uh, maybe a smoothie, and then I have one small meal at night. And that right. is either some, you know, guacamole or some beans, or when I have visitors in town or, you know, I'm out of town or something and we go to yep. a meal, it's just like a regular meal. But, yep. yeah, my typical diet is, you know, just m uh, mostly raw, mostly vegan. Well, that juicing really sets you off for the day. It gets, gets you lots of good fluids running through there. So that, that's great um, to help testify to that you can achieve pee that's actually not disgusting. That's good for your listeners to know. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> not, it, I know. Isn't that weird? It's not disgusting. It's actually like... I don't know. It was weird. A couple times I'm like, sniff, sniff, you know? And then I'll always put a little in my tongue just to taste. And it's like, whoa, this is yeah. tutti fruity. Like, how the heck did that happen? <laughs> yes, yes. Isn't that wild? And yeah, the more people stay on uh, getting that body healthier and healthier, it just gets tutti fruity. And it stays that way. Nice. Well, I'll take that. Tutti Fruity P. We got a juicer attached to our body. Somebody was talking in the chat. Oh, I wish I had a juicer. I'm like, well, you have one you in do. your body already. Yeah, that's a great uh, allegory you made. And somebody else brought that up independently, but I told them you had already mentioned it. <laughs> mm. uh, that, you said that during our last show, but the body being a juicer. Yeah. And, and separating the pulp from the liquids. That's fantastic. <laughs> All right. Well, now that I've shared my experiment with everyone, so I know a lot of our listeners were curious, uh, how's it going and why are you doing it? That's why. And you know what? I, I said I was going to do it for 30 days and then decide. And it is 30 days and I'm going to continue because I do see the benefits. Okay. I was thinking if you want to, uh, we got this um, maybe we could go 60 days out from now because uh, um, 30 and 90 days are usually uh, good landmarks when people are starting to hit the waters like this. Yeah. So we could do another show 60 days from now and uh, talk about what changes happen between now and then. Uh, because in my experience, this is just the beginning and the people are testifying too. the health is the beginning. And, you know, like you said, you start your dream time, your thinking, your clarity, your intuition, all that's starting to amplify. And the only, I mean, how can you try to imagine where that stops? It's all you can do is imagine a limit to energy. So mm -hmm. you can actually see that we're just at the tip of the iceberg here. Uh, a lot, a lot of energy more to come and which will slowly make our bodies healthier and thus make us able to wield even more power and more definitely. life definitely now tell us about that andrew how why is it making us healthier why is it giving us increased energy 
Um, because the very thing that we think of as energy is what pure water conducts. And the more it's pure, the more pure it is, the more of the energy conducts. And the more dirty it is, the less of it conducts. And the more dirty it is, the more harmful energy like harp and scalar weapons it conducts. And, uh, the dirtier it is, the less of the energy conducts. And so, when you make your body, when you start doing what you're doing, you are already drinking distilled water. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of times people ask, you know, what's the difference between urine and distilled? If they want in the same, then, you know, why would you even bother drinking urine? Well, it's just that urine can become distilled uh, like no machine can even match. Now, I'm sure you've seen the softness that your water becomes. And there's no distiller that can make water as pure as the human body. So it's just that it's still, it is the water component between distilled water and urine that is the workhorse in them. But the human body, which we call that output urine or orin, uh, that product is just thousands of times more distilled. Um, and so, you know, how, how is it making us healthy? Well, it's we need to understand that word itself more because nobody really has a, a fix on it. We'll talk about it when we come back. <laughs> yeah, all right. Hang on, everyone. We will be back after this short break with Andrew Norton Weber. Again, the website is AquariusTheWaterBearer.com. Stay tuned. Soul Journeys Radio. It's time to get real and heal. MyTrueEssence.net would like to tell you about Modifilant, brown seaweed extract. It's composed of an elementally rich seaweed called laminaria. It takes 40 pounds of laminaria to make just one pound of Modifilant. There's nothing else like Modifilant. It is the richest in alginate, fucoidin, organic iodine, and lamarian. Alginates are the most effective organic element in nature that enable the body to rid itself of heavy metals, radioactive elements, and toxins. Fucoidin is an extremely effective anti-cancer substance found abundantly in brown seaweed. Organic iodine is the greatest protection for the thyroid offered by nature. Laminarin aids in the prevention and treatment of cardiovascular disease. Go to www.mytrueessence.net and click the Modifiland banner to get started on your path to rich health today. Also, check out the healing shop for proven essential oils, medicinal teas, and even health coach. It's time to get real and heal. Go to www.mytrueessence.net. You're listening to AmericanFreedomRadio.com, the network who perseveres in delivering intelligent debate, constructive dialogue with true independence. For freedom to broadcast the truth is not free at all. So what is American Freedom Radio worth to you? The empowering information with fun, honest and pure integrity behind it provides an example to follow, friendships to flourish, with the moral altruism that pulls no punches. The hosts sacrifice and show remarkable discipline in their duty to deliver quality radio and service to the community with strength, wisdom, and loyalty. The founders of AFR wish to thank you personally for sharing your views and insights to make the best radio and alternative media. Now it's time for you to give something back and play a vital role in the future of America. Be as generous with us as we've been with you. Click on the donate banner at AmericanFreedomRadio.com or volunteer by emailing AmericanFreedomRadio at Ymail.com. Vaccine, psychotropic drugs, and artillery batteries not included. All right, welcome back, and thanks for joining us here tonight. Soul Journeys Radio on AmericanFreedomRadio.com. And our special guest tonight, Andrew Norton Weber, the man who inspired me and probably thousands others uh, to try urine therapy. And I know you've been doing a lot of speaking events and lots of radio shows. So thank you, Andrew. I think that's really awesome. You, you know, putting yourself out there and teaching people about this uh, very controversial therapy, um, but we left off, uh, yeah, why Why does this work? Um, yeah, that's kind of where we left off. Why is urine therapy so successful? Why does it make us healthy? Mm-hmm. Um, well, healthy is, if you ask most people, they don't really know what they mean by that. And, um, what does it mean? 
it's just kind of abstract thing. You're like, well, what do you actually mean that you want by that? Well, let's use this for example. I know two people that have used it uh, successfully to cure their cancer um, as part of their regimen. And I know somebody else who literally completely cured his diabetes in three weeks and he didn't change anything else about his diet. He didn't, you know, start juicing or weed eating or anything. He was just doing distilled water and urine therapy. Three weeks, diabetes, poof, gone. Well, and what we mainly see in people when they do something like that is they generally go from gray and ashen to golden and shiny. They they may not necessarily go all the way to golden and shiny, but there's this constant reference to having color in your cheeks if you're healthy. Uh, if, you know, well, the first, oh, you look pale. You know, are you feeling all right? You look pale. Uh, or he was ashen, or he was uh, blue in color. It's all these cold, uh, lifeless terms. Um, and when at the other end, when people are healthy, they say, oh, you had rosy red cheeks, or there's a glow about you. And what finally dawned on me is, it's again, it's light. And the answer to the question is, why, why does it make us healthy? is is a very literal answer because what healthy means is to be full of light and just like um alchemy uh, means light chemistry or wherever you see these l sounds uh the references to life um what is in the middle of the word health or heal or healthy is al it's again it's it's heal uh and the the S is optional. It could be shield or shelf or shelfy. And uh, I think what it's saying is that when he heals, he lights. And that's what he all really means. And if you're healthy, you're lighty. Uh, and it works uh, as a term. If you understand that and think of a term that means that you're full of light, uh, did he heal? Uh, yes, your friend became full of light. And that's exactly what you see in not only the movie Fat, Sick, and Nearly Dead, but in all the testimonials and in what everybody thinks of as being healthy. If they really think about it, it's always these images of people with color in their bodies. And with, um, and if you ask them to come up with alternate words for what they, what they mean by healthy, they tend to choose energy words like vibrant yeah. um, um, or whatever. They just sit there and think what words you try to come to your mouth when you try to say what you mean by healthy. It's usually these things that have to do with an energetic being. Um, and it really means that you become full of light. And the reason the distilled waters make you full of light is because it literally they channel light, they conduct light, the, that that light which we want, the the, harm, the the healing energy called prana, mana, or chi, or the force. So it's a very literal answer. That it's also it's so simple that it's very hard to pass pass on to our friends and neighbors. Yeah. That that literal simplicity to it is one of the biggest things that makes it hard to tell people. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Um, I loved your uh, your video going out on the streets of Missouri there. <laughs> <laughs> that was fun. And uh, for those of you who have seen it and think that we were just harassing people all night, we actually weren't. We were actually educating. We were out there like four and a half hours but, you know, who wants to watch a video that long? I just, I wanted to have fun with it and figure even people that um, are completely opposed to it, um, at least that might get them, you know, even if they're watching it just because it's funny and stupid, um, they, it might plant a seed, you know, as far as the video. But I'm definitely positive uh, we did plant seeds. And you just reminded me, Andrew, that was something I did want to ask you about because I do intend on doing things like that uh, more frequently. 
uh, when we're not buried in snow. But um, do you have a flyer or something on your website that we could print up and hand out next time? Uh, no, I don't. Uh, that has been suggested that um, business cards um, with just the website on it um, mm -hmm. could be sold, you know. Uh, so, <laughs> seriously, to this day, when I go out on town and I'm talking to somebody new, I literally still grab scraps of paper and scribble my website. I have needed, mm -hmm. I have needed what you were asking about for a long time. Well, let's put it out there, Andrew. Whoever, <laughs> you know, has some time on their hands and believes in urine therapy and is really good at compilating or compiling um, information that would make like a one nice flyer, maybe even a half sheet or something. I'm sure Andrew and everyone else would appreciate if you, you know, spent some time putting a, a flyer that he could post on his website or if you don't want to, I will or you know, whatever, so that any of us can just download it, print it off right away, and just hand to anyone oh, who is curious. Uh, like a basic fact sheet, as much as you can fit reasonably into an eight and a half by eleven page. Is that kind of yeah, what you mean? absolutely, uh -huh. or even half of that, and you know, uh -huh. two flyers out of each page. So we did that, like with vaccines and fluoride and stuff in the past. Um, I'm kind of overloaded with time. Plus, I don't even have like word or photoshop or things to do those things but if anybody out there does pretty please uh put a little flyer together and let him know or let me know and i will definitely uh go give out a few hundred every day very easily because i love to talk to people on the street <laughs> yeah. um, i also noticed with every person you know it was it was just like for reality you know like uh 95 out of 100 people you were going to ask that they were just going to say no and just quickly walk on they almost speed up their step after you ask them a question about urine therapy i know <laughs> uh but i definitely saw that every time that you did that and you were very clear about what you were asking they're like what did you say and you're like you're in therapy and uh you planted a seed absolutely and every one of those people they will not because that was a thing before I'd heard about this, I had never heard about this. I'd never heard the term urine therapy, and that's the key to researching this. Uh, you know, because like you can buy the most awesome health books in the world, but they don't ever talk about urine aside from a waste product. And it's only when you punch in the term urine therapy that all of this information is so easily available. So, you know, the next time those people hear about it, they're going to remember that somebody else had already asked them about it, and it won't be the first time. So that was really awesome that you did that for all those people. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Let me ask you this. There's a question that keeps coming up. Um, if, you know, people are taking medications or, you know, any type of drug or whatever, or like the, the one guy in the video, he's like, you just saw me put out a cigarette. I'm like, so, you know, they're so worried that they think that whatever toxins they're bringing in is going to come out through their urine. Um, can you, you know, can you elaborate on that? Why, why is, you, you told us last show that even, you know, a toxic person, somebody with cancer, their urine is still better than pretty much anything they can go to the store and buy to drink. Exactly. So how um, does that work? Well, and, and know that um, I'm not a scientist. I'm just working backwards from what I see. And so uh, we're just doing our best to explain this. But we we already know that it works, and that's that's my position. And it's from the, the 2000 testimonials. Um, so, you know, we are backing out of the most toxic time we could have had, could never even imagine. I know 20 years ago, I wouldn't even have never could have imagined things would get this toxic. Yeah. Uh, both intentionally and uh, just, it's just ridiculous how many ways it's happening. Um, so everybody's different and everybody's got incredible different intricacies of different toxins in them and different tolerances that they've built up to different drugs. And um, why is urine not a waste product? 
Um, but see, there's multiple questions. There's prescription drugs. Um, can you take them and do urine therapy? That one, the most direct answer seems to be that you have to look up each individual drug that you're on because they all metabolize differently. Yeah. And, um, some of them may show up in your pee in different amounts and you may be able to cut back on your medicine because you're looping mm-hmm. an amount of it. Um, and different toxic drugs, people wondering, well, you know, if they test for marijuana or drugs or in your pee, then how can that be that there's no toxins in there? But these are infinitesimally small amounts of these things, and they're noticing increases in very minute amounts. It's not like it goes from uh, 0% uh, cocaine to a 20% readout of cocaine in your urine after you snort cocaine. It's going to be minuscule, minuscule uh, changes. Um, and those tax, the toxins that are in the urine themselves act as stimulants. Uh, they are not at levels to kill you. They are at levels to give you the information of what's wrong with you, which is exactly how vaccines work that the corporations are handing out. They give you um, beat-up cells of polio uh, that are weak and or dead, um, and your body studies those very things that are toxic, gives the information. And it's a, it's a little clue. It, well, it's not a little clue. It's the clue as to who's bothering you. Um, but yeah, that, I mean, we can't, that's one thing to help people feel okay. And this common thing, do I need to clean out before I do urine? No, urine is the cleaner. Um, and, the testimonials are full almost entirely of people who are extremely toxic. Most people think of they're toxic because they're, you know, I drink beer and I smoke cigarettes and I, um, I had a drug habit or whatever. But we're talking about people that are so full of garbage that their bodies are racked with cancer. Um, yeah. and crazy diseases and viruses, uh, and funguses and just, Without explaining how, what we see is that it does. When you start pounding it, your own water, it flushes everything out of the body. Uh, and even, and I mentioned the orchitis testimonial uh, in Armstrong's book. It was the most foul ur- Armstrong, urine Armstrong had ever seen. And uh, within minutes, it reduced the man's symptoms in half after drinking this Black sludge, thick urine. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, and you know, one other way, it, it was just in your body already. You know, how can it, how can it be that bad for you if it was, it was in you moments ago? And be like, well, my body's getting rid of it. I don't want to put it back in. But it's not. It's the the ninety nine point nine 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 percent of your waste goes out the the pulp end of your juicer <laughs> yeah. out, of your, out of your body juicer out of your in your feces that's where the waste goes yeah. um so and it's scientifically known that uh the liver produces clean blood uh, it doesn't need any more cleaning after it goes through the liver the kidneys are the, the liver is the workhorse distiller. The kidneys are fine tuners. Uh, uh, there's just skimming stuff off the top. Uh, so it's, it's really a sampling of what your blood already is. Mm-hmm. It, it, okay. You'd be dead if it was deadly. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and I'm not dead, everyone, and neither is Andrew or anyone hey. else that is uh, joining us <laughs> in this uh, urine therapy. So hang on, everyone. We will be back. It's time to get real and heal. 
MyTrueEssence.net would like to tell you about Modifilan, brown seaweed extract. It's composed of an elementally rich seaweed called laminaria. It takes 40 pounds of laminaria to make just one pound of Modifilan. There's nothing else like Modifilan. It is the richest in alginate, phocoidin, organic iodine, and lamarian. Alginates are the most effective organic element in nature that enable the body to rid itself of heavy metals, radioactive elements, and toxins. Phocoidin is an extremely effective anti-cancer substance found abundantly in brown seaweed. Organic iodine is the greatest protection for the thyroid offered by nature. Laminarin aids in the prevention and treatment of cardiovascular disease. Go to www.mytrueessence.net and click the Modifilan banner to get started on your path to rich health today. Also check out the healing shop for proven essential oils, medicinal teas, and even health coach. It's time to get real and heal. Go to www.mytrueessence.net. Yo, what's up? Check this out. The voice of the revolution. American Freedom Radio. American Freedom Radio. All right, welcome back, and thanks for joining us here tonight with Andrew Norton Weber. AquariusTheWaterBearer.com is the website, and he has a ton of information there in the water library about distilled water, why that's a better choice, um, juicing, fasting, urine therapy. Uh, there's some uh, PDF books and such there, so check it out. That's AquariusTheWaterBearer.com, and we left off about... Um, you know, why, why, or, or if it's dangerous to drink your urine, if, you know, we have drugs or other toxins in our system. So please continue, Andrew. Sure. Um, people kind of have to slowly get themselves off of whatever drugs they've gotten themselves into. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, that's a, personal issue with each drug and you know, they're all different and they all have different withdrawal symptoms too. Um, but it seems to be that everybody can get off their uh, meds and uh, come around. I agree with that. Yep. Full on urine drinking. And, and um, you yeah, know, this is, this is the hardest parts right now when we're all in these super toxic, States and especially after you know three to five, six, seven decades of letting the body become toxic, it's really uh, a lot of damage to undo. But it's a good thing we have these four different waters so that we can uh, melt it off in different ways. Yeah, let me ask you this as far as uh, people who are wanting to get off of, I don't know, their heart medication, for example. And they, you know, decided, okay, the doctors aren't helping me. I'm going to take my health into my own hands. But they were worried about maybe side effects of withdrawal or just quitting right away. Well, you know, I guess depending on the half-life, if you did start drinking your urine while you were on these drugs, wouldn't you be getting, like, trace um, components of that drug in your urine? So, I mean, could that actually help? wean yourself off the drugs without actually taking, you know, the full amount of whatever you were prescribed? Yes, and that goes along uh, with the fact that they all metabolize differently. There may be traces of it. There may be uh, higher doses of it. Um, it all depends upon the drug. Um, but the scenario laid out could absolutely happen. Um, it could happen like that with most drugs, I would think. Um, yeah, because somebody was saying in the chat that uh, homeopathic amounts of psilocybin in the urine will set your high to another level, so why wouldn't other drugs have the same effect reintroducing them to the body? Well, all drugs uh, are, are effective in different um, quantities, and so it only takes a little bit of pure psilocybin to set you high. Um, Whereas people hardly notice any uh, high effect at all from the THC that's recycled in their urine. Okay. Uh, so it all depends on the drug. Okay. So, um, all right. I mean, the bottom line is, though, that urine is 95% water. 
<clears throat> and it has been, you know, test. there's tons of reports out there, by the way. I have a few articles open um, right now, but okay, it's 95% water. It has potassium, calcium, folic acid, iron, magnesium, zinc, and, you know, whatever else you might have going through your system. So, I'm, but the way I look at it is that's a lot healthier than what we have coming out of our tap, right? I mean, is is what we have in the tap actually 95% water? I don't know. We have fluoride, lead, cadmium, arsenic, mercury, you know, and all of the, uh, you know, psychotropics or any other drug that people are on in there. So, I mean, worst case scenario, wasn't it? Weren't the toxin, or if you do have any toxins, I mean, it's just very trace amounts, right? Uh, yeah. Um, also, I guess we can just keep pulling up things. This is the stage where people want the proof other than the testimonials. And you have to keep pulling up common sense things. You can see across the board in the military and the special forces, uh, that the higher you go, whether it's into Delta or the Rangers, or the Green Berets or the, the Navy mm-hmm. SEALs or the Marine Corps recon, uh, the further in they go, the, they're essentially told the truth when you get to the highest levels that you just drink yeah. it all the time. Uh, and you can, and you should stay hydrated all the time with it. <laughs> uh, but with our, uh, I guess the, I don't know what you call it, the, the military men who, who don't qualify to be told the truth, uh, regular soldiers, the guys who are, you know, out in the field, the vast majority of the time are not being told this. And um, I heard of one soldier who was sucking on wet wipes just for the moisture out of them. Oh, my gosh. Uh, You know, think of all those guys out there in the desert that don't know about this, but yet the special forces are going around drinking it constantly. Yeah, look at how many people were, you know, they they titled it Gulf War Syndrome or something, and they found out it had to do with all of the sodas that were sitting in the hot desert in plastic bottles, and they all got sick. I mean, imagine if they were drinking their urine. Yeah. 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 So people are really, really sick from that, and we're worried about, you know, our own water. Kind of funny. (laughs) <laughs> you know? And it helps to pull radiation out of the body. So we got all that depleted uranium flying around. And we got uh, uh, Fukushima radiation and everything else. It's everywhere. Um, those are all basic, inorganic, positively charged particles. So they get pulled out too. Okay. So you say that uh, research in the 90s claimed that uh, drinking urine can cure jet lag. Um, People also, I mean, I think it's widely known about the antibacterial, antifungal, antiviral properties, but there's also claims um, of anti-cancer properties. And again, I know two people personally that have already cured their cancer that used urine as uh, part of their treatment, their natural treatment. So... I don't know. I think that's saying a lot. And, you know, Loyo de Machida, of course, uh, he's talked about it on videos. And, you know, his cute little dad is like, yeah, it's my vaccine, you know. And they, he, he explained in one of the videos that when he gets sick or he felt he feels something coming on, he just drinks some of his pee and um, that takes care of it for him. So you mentioned in the last show that you can actually um, get the benefits of it without actually drinking it, but taking just a few drops under your tongue uh, homeopathically. Can you explain how that works? Uh, yeah. Um, those little trace amounts of everything that we're talking about, it's everything that's toxic and all sickness that you have, there's going to be uh, trace amounts of everything that's wrong with you in your urine, and those are called antigens. And the lymph nodes under your tongue produce antibodies, um, and antigens are what they would most like to study. To That's where the true information is. And so when you – you don't even have to swallow it. If you um, are being, being bitten by a snake or a spider or – you're having an allergic reaction, any allergy, uh, and even the most deathly of allergies, peanut, milk, um, 
you can just put a few drops under your tongue and at all times whatever is going on with you as above so below as without so within and if the universe is a hologram then every drop of your own water and if pure water is like a blank cd every drop of your own water has a perfect printout readout of everything that's going on with you and just even three to five drops under your tongue that would be the most minimal thing you could do every morning even if you aren't in the middle of a poisoning or an allergic reaction is putting a um drops under your tongue and just you got to hold it there for 10 minutes uh on average usually uh to really let those lymph nodes under your tongue study it and it alerts them to what's wrong with you and they start producing the right antibodies that have the correct knowledge of how to take down whatever foreign invaders inside you whether it's if you just got bit by a cobra or uh or you're having an allergic reaction that makes a lot of sense actually because when you look at mainstream medicine or vaccines and such it always starts off with animals uh blood urine and fecal matter okay for the dna or the stem cells or all of this crap so you know and they're putting it in popular medications and creams and lotions and stuff which we discussed last time so that kind of in itself proves that mainstream knows that it works and you know here they're telling everyone oh it's toxic don't do it but here drink a cow's pee or a horse's pee or you know somebody else's pee and you know uh when i went down to oklahoma for thanksgiving my friend uh which i didn't know at the time i knew he worked at a factory but then i find out what type of factory he works at he works at a fertilizer manufacturing plant and guess what their main ingredient is nitrogen urea Oh, urea. Urea. Really? Yeah, that was the first ingredient. He said urea, uh then he said uh, ammonia and I guess nitrogen, but I guess uh urea urine itself is super high in nitrogen. Um, so where but, are they getting that urea? Well, I asked him that and he's not really sure, <laughs> but I asked uh-huh. if hey, hire me. <laughs> wow. I can I can pee for a living, but <laughs> so I mean that obviously proves that it's not going to hurt you it causes things to grow in fact here in the winter where everything is brown where all the doggies go potty it's green just in those little patches so i don't know there's something to this take us and it's that time again we'll be right back it's time to get real and you mytrueessence.net would like to tell you about modifilan brown seaweed extract it's composed of an elementally rich seaweed called laminaria it takes 40 pounds of laminaria to make just one pound of modifilan there's nothing else like modifilan it is the richest in alginate fucoidin organic iodine and lamaria alginates are the most effective organic element in nature that enable the body to rid itself of heavy metals radioactive elements and toxins fucoidin is an extremely effective anti-cancer substance found abundantly in brown seaweed Organic iodine is the greatest protection for the thyroid offered by nature. Laminarin aids in the prevention and treatment of cardiovascular disease. Go to www.mytrueessence.net and click the Modifilan banner to get started on your path to rich health today. Also check out the healing shop for proven essential oils, medicinal teas, and even health coach. It's time to get real and heal. Go to www.mytrueessence.net. No rules, no rules, no taboo topics, no taboo topics, no fear of doom, no fear of doom. We are, we are American Freedom Radio, American Freedom Radio. All right, welcome back and thanks for joining us here tonight. Top of the second hour here, Soul Journeys Radio on AmericanFreedomRadio.com. <clears throat> Excuse me. <laughs> Our special guest tonight, Andrew Norton Weber. His website is AquariusTheWaterBearer.com. Check it out. Seriously, excellent information. Anything you would like to know about uh, distilled water, juicing, fasting, urine therapy, looping, uh, all of these things here we are talking about tonight. That's AquariusTheWaterBearer.com. And if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to give us a call at 218 339 
888-339-8525. That's 218-339-8525. And if you'd like to join us on the text chat, that's over at souljourneysradio.com. And uh, Andrew, let me ask you this. Why is it when you talk with people, uh, for example, when you're on the street carrying a gallon of your own pee, where people, you know, after they get over the ick factor and want to debate it, they're like, oh, no, I can't do that because it has all this sodium in it, and then you're going to dehydrate yourself. What's the truth about that? Uh, well, it is not what happens to people who are stranded at sea or um, or trapped in islands or trapped in earthquake rubble. Uh, and we have the awesome Dave Murphy, who is going around giving talks. You should interview him sometime, Christy. Okay. Uh, yeah, like, oh, sometimes he goes by allegedly Dave. Um, he's in our distilled waters group. Okay. Um, Oh my gosh, he went 30, he purposely pretended there had been an apocalypse and went for 30 days without drinking anything, no external water even, just his own pee. And I flat out asked him, I said, what was the volume like from the beginning to the end? And he said it was constant, it was the same. It wasn't that he got more and more dehydrated. Uh, And he, he, um, he was overweight and had a lot of a uh, number of health issues. He had an eight inch balding spot, and I'm just guessing roughly eight inches on the top of his head, completely baby smooth. Um, um, had I told you about him before? No. Uh-huh. Oh my gosh. Uh, yeah, he's amazing. Allegedly Dave, uh, and his actual name is Dave Murphy. He uses either one. He's on the awake radio sometimes, or used to be. But okay. I did a great interview with him once, and, um, uh, What's wonderful about him, and he's still going, he's actually working on moving towards Batharianism now, or liquidarianism is actually the correct term, because it's still really the liquids that move through the body. Okay. Um, so uh, he's still going. He's uh, really working on, I think he's just on just on juice now, uh, and uh, Orin. Um, but... I asked him, did the volume stay the same? And he even purposely worked really hard one day during that 30 days. Um, he built a structure. Uh, he carried all the materials all the way, like 100 yards across his yard. Uh, built a geodesic dome, something like that. In one day, carried all the material across the yard, built the whole structure all by himself, tore it down all by himself, and brought it all back across the yard where it originally was by himself. And um, he noticed that he actually didn't sweat as much as he normally would. Hmm. Um, and he had energy all throughout, all throughout the 30 days. His uh, eight-inch balding spot uh, launched a new level of grass, a new astroturf growing there. Um, he had a, an Achilles heel injury that he had always uh, he had learned to limp around. People with their aches and pains, they start walking in funny positions and because they're actually trying to favor different injuries. And he said, without even realizing it, somewhere during the middle of the uh, 30 days, his Achilles heel wasn't hurting anymore, and he'd just gotten so used to it. Um, he also got the urge to go running, and he ran like a quarter, a half a mile straight, and he said he wasn't breathing heavy at the end of it. He uh, lost seven – he was cutting actually holes in his belt. He lost – he went seven wow. belt notches backwards in weight. And that was just during the 30 days. I mean, that was over a year ago, I believe, roughly, that he did that. Wow. And uh, he's still going. Great guy. Um, his story's awesome, and he's – Normally, these survivor testimonials, we, we don't have the ability to ask the person. You can't get, you don't know who it is. You can't get a hold of them that, you know, that was trapped on the island or, tra- uh, you know. Uh, but with Dave Murphy, we have somebody who pretended as though he was trapped and his only thing available was his own water. And that's what he did for 30 days. And so it's great we get to ask him. Yeah, yeah, he's a really nice guy too. Got a great British. So he healed himself. He lost weight. He didn't dehydrate or anything else that people want to scare us with. 
Oh yeah, and also uh, his his before he did this, I think his doctor had said that he he's about forty, and he had the or well, maybe forty five, but he said he had the doctor the lungs of a seven year old, and he was on an inhaler, and he no longer uses his inhaler either. Um, and I may be even leaving some things out, but um, and also it was his mother who was on, I believe, high blood pressure medicine so like no she had high blood pressure and i think she was taking medicine to help lower it and um gosh i can't remember i don't i can't i don't know if he got her on orin or if she's drinking distilled water but if she was doing either one of those and her blood pressure was really low and she called her she said dang my blood pressure is low and he said well are you still taking your blood pressure medicine she goes yeah he said well she said she was taking two per day. He said, cut it in half. Just take one per day. And her blood pressure normalized. And I don't know if it was a few weeks or a couple of months later, but she called him again. And she said, Dave, she said, my blood pressure is too low. And he said, well, are you still taking your blood pressure medicine? She said, yeah. He said, well, stop taking that one. So she stopped taking the last one. And her blood pressure went to normal. So it was the medicine, her own, the waters healed her. Um, and from her body's reaction, she was able to slowly wean herself off of that particular blood medicine. And if I'm telling you wrong, you can ask him about this. I'm sure he's got an ongoing story. Uh, you would have a fabulous two-hour interview with him. So you can ask him about yeah, that, too. I would definitely um, like to talk with him. Yeah. So people don't get dehydrated. Uh, the salts actually end up going away. It's just these are all things that are in excess. And so... Um, when you keep drinking it, it doesn't stay salty. It, it moves towards clarity, both in sight and flavor and smell. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, which if these were all things, if this was waste, it would just get more and more salty and more and more concentrated and darker and darker. But it does the opposite. Yeah. yeah, it'll fluctuate on the way there, but the overall trend is towards clarity. Uh, so, there's no more, like you said, you had fruity 2DP. There's no saltiness in fruity 2DP or mm -hmm. the, the revered coconut water pee. Uh, it's yeah. not a salty beverage. It's a warm, wonderfully light, soft, and fluffy, coconutty beverage that you can't believe that you created. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's where I'm at. And I'm really glad you mentioned the inhaler. Uh, with uh, Dave Murphy because that was another thing I forgot to mention when I was sharing the things that I have experienced uh, physically uh, since I've started this. And asthma was something that I had my whole life, which I got kind of under wraps with changing my diet, drinking distilled water, H2O2, and peppermint oil. But I'll tell you what, with the urine, I'm breathing even better. I haven't used an inhaler for years um, cause I just figured I'm going to find a natural way to do it. Um, but yeah, in the last month I've been breathing even better. Um, uh, my airways are clear and I have way less mucus. Like if I would have, uh, before, if I would have like a piece of cheese or something or ice cream or anything with like dairy in it, I would be coughing, uh, blah, 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 you know, <laughs> and I'm not doing that now. Um, it's, yeah, noticeable changes here. So do we have any idea why it affects the lungs like that? Well, they're, they're a massive waste eliminator. They're, you know, you're always breathing out garbage. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I know even for, that's one example I've used a lot for, in some of the books, you look up lung cancer and the first thing I'll say to do in the urine therapy books is an enema. Um, and so they tie it directly with waste and the need to get out, move massive amounts of waste out of the way, which is all that these pure waters are attracted to. That's their main thing is attracted to that, which is not nice to you. Um, and so, you know, our lungs are always, we have the chemtrails going on. Uh, but luckily, the water stick to the nanobots too. So, and that all the dots of metal they're spraying, uh, no need to worry. I mean, yeah, we don't want it, but uh, you can protect yourself. And then you do this long enough and get enough energy flowing through you, and you can pop out your aura strong enough to block out uh, the harp and the Wi-Fi and the cell towers. And 
I can tell you, Tristy, how awesome it was and what a surprise when I was telling you the testimony about the other TI who blocked her, her voice and skull transmission and to have you come out and yeah. testify. That's, it's so, that's such an important testimonial that really, really, uh, helps to get into and allow people to start discussing powers, like the powers we yeah. have dreamed about having as children, a force field and the ability to, to throw sound and light like the wizards that we are. Uh, that that's totally what that blew my mind. When you started talking about that in the last show, I mean, I had no idea that that could have contributed or probably was maybe the major contributor why I'm not being affected like I used to yep. be. So, um, yeah, that is amazing. Can you um, share with us a little more insight with the positive, the negative, you know, electrical charges? Please, for, for our scientific technical minds out there. <laughs> well, in our currently accepted uh, way of speaking about things, they say the opposites attract in the electrical world and um, distilled water has a negative charge to it and everything that in existence that you do not want in your body has a positive charge to it. Um, and it is as simple as magnetism. And that it sticks to it, and I believe that's how it dissolves things. It turns them from solids, uh, solid deposits all throughout your body. It melts them, and I believe it, it rips them apart, backs it, it backs these deposits out one layer at a time, just like it accumulated. Um, it takes them apart piece by piece. Um, it, you know, it, it seems to be it, it's a dividing line, even all of the. Um, the uh, pathogens, uh, most pathogens, too, seem to have a, a positive charge and are vacuumed out of the body by this liquid magnetic vacuum. Mm -hmm. um, and it's too, again, it's too simple. It's too simple. People want to make it complex. Um, they can't believe that. They've had too much college. Uh, there's no way that they could have missed that or there's no way that that's not being taught in school. Um, but yeah, it's, that's, it's not being taught because it's that simple and because it's the key to revving up all these incredible engines. All these gods are sitting in incredible engines, but we do not know how to fuel it. <laughs> and that's all this is. Mm -hmm. This is just the instructions to hit the go button for everybody's body suit. And it'll amplify what everybody's working on and trying to do. Uh, I don't know what it'll do yeah. for everybody. It'll just, Whatever you want to do, you'll be able to do it a thousandfold better, to say the least. I agree. I'll tell you what, my intuition and insight um, and even my dream time uh, are really off the hook. And, I mean, I, I've definitely noticed how in the last five years when I get out of a wheelchair, you know, that just got better and better, which maybe we can attribute that to the distilled water. Uh, but in the last 30 days, whew, it's... <laughs> It's almost scary, crazy, and I, I mean, you know, I'm definitely not complaining or anything. I, I definitely like um, the ability to see beyond the five senses, but I've also heard from other people that have been trying this uh, since we did our last show. Uh, they express that their dreams were just in you know, incredibly magnified and vivid and really meant something to them. And they're experiencing that every day. They also mentioned their intuition as well. So I don't know. <laughs> There's definitely I mean, something to it. <laughs> right. And that's all. I mean, you're seeing this just like I am. And then this doesn't happen to anybody from any other substance that we ingest. And yeah. for all the people that are seeking um, spiritual bliss through drugs, it's all accessible through the water. Uh, what yeah. what people want, and it makes sense. People want people are magical, but they've been dumbed down and had their instructions robbed from them of of who and what they are and how to operate the suit. Mm -hmm. and, but you want to be magical, or you are magical, but you're not feeling magical, and so the hallucinogens. Um, and the visionaries, they they give you windows into what we should be like. <laughs> we should be able to access and have it very, very much in control, too, not just completely whacked out and 
whatever LSD wants to show you or uh, whatever ayahuasca wants to show you, um, you should be much more lucid in your dreams and start to be in complete control and co-creating there uh, as well as the waking time. And I mean, we, we're all I'm, we're all such novices that we need chat rooms in that we need lots of people talking about this because these are old powers that we used to have, but we're all it's been away from it and told and just beat the heck out of us that it's not real and told our whole lives, no, you cannot dream and there's no we just don't know what the dream world is and you can't fly and you can't have a force field and you're just a dumb stupid thing no much better than a caveman yeah uh, but no who <laughs> and i'm this is just you know it's fabulous for me to hear you testify about your dreams and intuition coming up and to hear your friends say it i love mm -hmm. it and this is yeah. this is why i started talking about this because what i was seeing was 60 and 70 year old people who are getting ready to die overcoming illnesses I was like, well, wait a second. What if 20 and 30 year olds who are already healthy start diving into this? Yeah, absolutely. Good point. But it is that time. Hang on, everyone. We will be right back. Soul Journeys Radio. It's time to get real and heal. MyTrueEssence.net would like to tell you about Modifilant, brown seaweed extract. It's composed of an elementally rich seaweed called Laminaria. It takes 40 pounds of Laminaria to make just one pound of Modifilant. There's nothing else like Modifilant. It is the richest in alginate, Fucoidin, organic iodine, and Lamarian. Alginates are the most effective organic element in nature that enable the body to rid itself of heavy metals, radioactive elements, and toxins. Fucoidin is an extremely effective anti-cancer substance found abundantly in brown seaweed. Organic iodine is the greatest protection for the thyroid offered by nature. Laminarin aids in the prevention and treatment of cardiovascular disease. Go to www.mytrueessence.net and click the Modifiland banner to get started on your path to rich health today. Also check out the healing shop for proven essential oils, medicinal teas, and even health coach. It's time to get real and heal. Go to www.mytrueessence.net. Welcome to the world's meeting place, American. It's practically narcotic. Freedom. Oh, yes. I like very much. Radio. They're an American institution. American Freedom Radio. All right. Welcome back. And thanks again for joining us here tonight. Soul Journeys Radio on AmericanFreedomRadio.com with Andrew Norton Weber. AquariusTheWaterBearer.com is the website. And, uh, Andrew, we left off uh, talking about uh, how it has been increasing our intuition and such. And during the break, I was sharing with you not only my intuition and dreams, but I almost feel like it's helping me step into my power, you know, setting clear boundaries. Whereas before, I was kind of like, eh, you know, wishy-washy, just this doesn't feel right, but I'm too afraid to do anything about it or say anything about it or block them or, you know. You know, do whatever I need to do, and I feel that it's helping me uh, become more clear, um, not just, you know, the power of insight, but setting boundaries here physically, um, rather than just tolerating it, you know, going along to get along. It's like, eh, eh, that doesn't work. Bye. Sorry. Bull crap. You know, and just, you know, setting boundaries, which is, is something I've, I've wanted to be better at. I, you know, I know there's probably a few of us. Uh, women especially that sometimes have a problem with, you know, setting clear boundaries and um yeah, so it's it's really helped me with that. Um and become more focused. Uh so yeah, lots of changes in the last thirty days, uh for me anyways, and from everyone else I've heard from, they've all said something positive. They feel great. They have more energy. I just uh, sent you a comment with, uh, you know, another listener that started the night that we did the show last week. And um, it, it appears that it's uh, helping him feel stronger, uh, having less fear and things as well. Um, so, by the way, if you want to join us in the text chat, there's lots of people talking about it and their experiences. So you can go to souljourneysradio.com. But um, let me, uh, somebody else was saying on the chat that it helps clean the pineal gland. 
So um, do, do you know or are you aware of any, you know, for the people who need paper, any scientific evidence of urine actually cleansing the pineal gland? Um, I only have it through anecdotal evidence um, of what people are reporting, um, the crown chakra bursts, uh, the ability to see the white light that stays in the head, uh, the ability to start seeing in the room that they're in with their eyes closed, uh, the beginnings of telepathy with animals and children. Um, I actually have an MRI of my head when I was about 30, uh, oh. roughly. Um, mm -hmm. And I have it, it's just nothing but a white, there's a white calcified pineal right in the middle of it. Um, I was thinking I would wait till, uh, until I have, I don't know. I just don't feel like mine is decalcified yet. Uh, but I would like to get a second one, although I have quandaries about whether or not to get a second one. I just don't want the uh, radiation, but at the same time, it would be really worth it yeah. to have a uh, photographic proof of that very question. Um, Definitely. But uh, from my understanding of what the all the powers of alchemy, uh, all these higher fantasy weapons and fantasy powers, um, I believe that's what, what we're starting to see bubble up in people. Um, and, you know, you yourself are a testimonial of a force field, um, which is, you know, supposedly we don't have. Uh, but yet as children, we always knew that we should have one. Uh, and the intuition starting up. Um, that's definitely or being we enhanced. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right, right. Being enhanced uh, mm -hmm. some, for some people for the first time, you know, actually recognizing it. I think that's what I can say is actually the recognition of my own intuition didn't really know that's what that was. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, that we should see the arising of, of people um, being able to have telepathy. And it, it's as... Um, Shay Thomas uh, testified at the Distilled Waters uh, Sacramento conference um, about telepathy. Um, we should start seeing coming in more adult to adult, uh, but she also experienced uh, having more telepathy with animals. Um, and that's somebody, I think she gave a great testimonial uh, and she's in the Distilled Waters group. She might um, come on the air sometime and testify for you, too. It's a whole group yeah. of nice people that um, that testify I could, um, that you could all consider as having guests, and they're fantastic and great about answering questions. Uh, I would Steve love to do a series of videos um, okay. with people that have cured themselves from different things. And, yeah, that'd be awesome. So if you're listening and you cured yourself and you're not camera shy or, you know, whatever, you want to talk about it, um, let me know because I, I definitely want to talk to you. I just think the more we put out there, the more the merrier, uh, more of a chance that somebody is going to come across that information and then, you know, maybe plant a seed and give them them hope because I'm positive that Andrew and I and the listeners are not the only ones uh, tired of the mainstream medicine route, right? <laughs> but, you know, people give up on their doctors every day and maybe start doing searching. So, um, yeah, if you have cured yourself from something and you want to talk about it, definitely uh, let me know. <laughs> Let me ask you this. Uh, somebody was asking, uh, does it take a full-on PFAS to cure cancer? <laughs> what are your thoughts on that? Um, that's the fastest way to do it is that. Uh, no, it doesn't. And I know one woman that um, who had metastatic breast cancer, she um, started hitting the distilled waters and the fruit juices and didn't touch urine at all. Um, mm -hmm. if I remember the story correctly, and she completely, um, well, she was only supposed to have weeks left to live, and now it's been nine months, possibly going on to a year now. Um, and again, this is her statement, and we're relying, I rely on what the people are saying. Um, so 
I'm you don't sure they're telling the truth, though. I mean, think about it. It's obviously a sensitive topic that you can easily be ostracized from your community. And nobody here has anything to gain by saying, you know, this is how or one way for you to heal yourself. I mean, it's not like you're buying RP. Okay. We're not, <laughs> nobody's selling you anything. So why would people put themselves out on Front Street like that and say, well, this is how I did it? It if they didn't actually do it. Yeah. Um, hmm. Yeah. And to also, even if even if somebody was lying, the, the reason I got the books from all over the planet, <laughs> you know, this means there's yeah. thousands of people pulling off the same joke everywhere. <laughs> well, that, yeah, that was one of the some of the questions that I asked when I did my first video. I'm like, oh my god, what if this is like a big joke and people are just planting these seeds just to see how many retards like me will go through with it? And <laughs> uh -huh. you know, you have to question that stuff. Uh, I'm telling you, people who watch my videos or listen to the show. I mean, you were there when I was in a wheelchair. You were there as I was healing myself. You were there before I started drinking pee, and you're here now. I've been doing the videos. It's, you know, again, I'm not selling you anything. I'm doing these experiments to see for myself and if other people, you know, feel that they benefited from the information, and, you know, you might want to try it for yourself. But I'm not gaining anything. I don't get paid for the radio show. I don't get paid for, I don't get paid for any of this. I'm doing it because... I mean, I don't think anybody should have to be sick for 35 years like I was. We we don't have to. And I just want to show people that there are other solutions. Not everything I've tried has worked as far as, you know, different supplements and things like that. And I'm honest about that. No, nope, that one's crap. That's crap. That's crap. This is great. This is what it did for me. Same thing with the urine. And, you know, just to be honest with you guys, I I totally had the ick factor OK, and I was actually kind of hoping that nothing would happen because I didn't want to, you know, I'm thinking, oh, my God, you know, I'm drinking pee. I'm drinking pee. This this, you know, this can't really be that great. But it is. It is. I, I didn't you know, I really didn't go into it with uh, very high expectations. But I just have to say I'm freaking impressed. And thank you, Andrew. Thank you. Uh -huh. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, thank you for taking it and and actually doing it. Um, and <laughs> That's man, the only way yeah. to know, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you've and you've had the courage to publicly uh, talk about it, and that is just lighting. As I told you earlier, you're lighting courage fires under all kinds of all kinds of people. Yeah. And it's not going to be that many more. We just yeah, need to people keep doing this. Uh, but it is. It's. An individually driven thing, a movement. Yeah, absolutely. And, and everybody can do it, and nobody can stop you from doing it. But nope. <laughs> we can see that the power, the choice is in our hands. And, you know, to get back to your friend's question about cancer, it, it, I think it depends. No, there's all kinds of ways. It's really, you know, um, that's the fastest way to get it out, but you could also. You can never touch urine at all and, and boot cancer out of the body. You could run uh, just juices um, would kill it. Um, it's just an equation of, of how many numbers of the toxins are in your body. And you start putting a river running through your body, and it flushes it out in very fast time. It's just yeah. that urine is the most finely distilled liquid uh, available. And it'll pull it out even faster. Yeah. I mean, if you des if you believe that your body was designed perfectly, it's certainly worth a shot. Um, and, yeah, you have a lot of information to sift through. We've definitely been lied to about this our entire lives. Ew, icky, don't touch. That's waste. That's why your body is getting rid of it. But, you know, on that subject, Andrew, maybe you can explain why, I mean, if it is waste, then why do we have so many minerals in our urine? And I would also like to know, why are we expelling those excess nutrients? Uh, it seems like the kidney is, um, to keep the pH correct, is skimming off 
things that are in excess. Um, and so it, they are, your body is peeing them out. It is saying in this exact moment, we don't need this stuff. Uh, and so they're leftovers and it literally is your choice to eat them or not, to consume them or not. Um, and they're bioavailable. They've already been through your system. They just go right back into you. Um, so what else? Well, yeah, I just, I mean, why, why are we having, why are we urinating nutrients oh. if supposedly it's a waste? And, you know, maybe okay. why isn't our body absorbing them? It is. Uh, the first That's time around. Little- well, okay. they, it actually is, and this is, you know, when you see, when you drink a lot, you pee a lot. You drink a lot of beer, you start peeing a lot. You start peeing really clear because you're pounding a lot of water in that beer. Um, mm-hmm. <sighs> um, well, we are. We are right now. The We're all drinking it right now. Exactly what you asked about is happening constantly. This is just like... A minute amount. On average, the kidneys go through a thousand liters a day. And how much pee do you see each day? Yeah, you know, it's uh, uh, you know. I think the average person might pee out two liters per day. But once you start looping, you can, you can. Um, I saw a John Armstrong testimonial on the Water of Life about somebody doing twenty-two pints per day, which is almost three gallons. Uh, and people yeah. start peeing out a lot, uh, sometimes almost, and we, we start to do a lot of talk about that stars and planets produce their own water. Uh, there's a video called Earth is Expanding by, I think it's Neil Adams, and that shows the water, the Earth is just expanding. And when you watch that video, you just see this orb, the Earth, floating in the sky, uh, ballooning up with water. If you really look at it, there's just more and more water. And people have noticed in the when they start drinking urine, sometimes they actually start peeing out more than they're drinking in. And so it looks like the body is not just a distiller, but it's also a condenser. And you have multiple ways to uh, process water. I think you breathe in water, too, and your skin breathes. Um, but coming back around to drinking it all the time, um, about... You know, more than 90% of it. If you're going through a thousand liters a day through the kidneys, um, that stuff, yeah, you tend to, you, you, people tend to think that all, that urine is the totality of what their kidneys go through and that it's just this squeezed out liquid waste product. But it's not. It's really a skimming off the top to keep your blood pressure right and your pH right uh, and you know, all your mineral levels right. And um, it's clean blood that goes through the kidneys, as the most scientific book I had said that blood entering the kidney or leaving the kidney is only very slightly altered compared to blood entering the kidney. Good point, Andrew. But hold that right there. We'll continue yeah. on the other side. Hang on, everyone. SoulJourneysRadio.com. It's time to get real and heal. MyTrueEssence.net would like to tell you about Modifilant, brown seaweed extract. It's composed of an elementally rich seaweed called laminaria. It takes 40 pounds of laminaria to make just one pound of Modifilant. There's nothing else like Modifilant. It is the richest in alginate, fucoidin, organic iodine, and lamaria. Alginates are the most effective organic element in nature that enable the body to rid itself of heavy metals, radioactive elements, and toxins. Fucoidin is an extremely effective anti-cancer substance found abundantly in brown seaweed. Organic iodine is the greatest protection for the thyroid offered by nature. Laminarin aids in the prevention and treatment of cardiovascular disease. Go to www.mytrueessence.net and click the Modifiland banner to get started on your path to rich health today. Also check out the healing shop for proven essential oils, medicinal teas, and even health coach. It's time to get real and heal. Go to www.mytrueessence.net. News and information you can trust. This is American Freedom Radio. Freedom, freedom, American. Freedom Radio. Radio. American Freedom Radio. Radio. 
All right, welcome back. Last segment here tonight with Andrew Norton Weber here on SoulJourneysRadio.com. Again, his website is AquariusTheWaterBearer.com. And you know what? I know everybody has an opinion, but the only way to really know is to try it for yourself. Um, I want to read a comment we got in the chat here that I highly resonate with, Andrew. Um, But he said that... It takes courage to talk about it. People have deleted me, even family. Get used to people avoiding you. Talking about it is the fastest way to clear out the imposter adults and fake friends. People who have no respect for you will blow you off real quick. I keep talking about it to educate people about their bodies, planting seeds that may someday save a life when what I said pops into their minds. And uh, so true. I highly resonate with that. And you know what? I mean, really, why does everybody care so much about what somebody else is doing for themselves in the first place? I would say consider it a blessing when people run away from you. I mean, are you going? I mean, I know I'm not going around and saying, ew, you drink soda and beer. I can't be your friend anymore. <laughs> it only shows how evolved they are. So uh, I don't know. Keep doing what you're doing. What do you think, Andrew? <laughs> yeah, yeah. They've they've really uh, gotten it into people's heads, not only that uh, urine is a waste product, but also that our bodies are disgusting. And nobody wants to know what's inside them. Nobody wants to see what's inside them. Um, so we've just got this total, and you, know, you see people using the handy sanitizing wipes all the time too, and, um, it, antibacterial gels are just terrified of everything. Um, and that's just making, that's, you know, it's just making their immune systems weaker. All this, um, Scaredy catness about germs and, and the flu or the avian flu or SARS or all these different things are scaring us with. Um, you're not really scared anymore once you realize that you have your own auto vaccination system. Yeah, that's what it is. And again, it makes sense the auto vaccination system. Again, what? How do they make vaccines that you go get injected in your arm? Monkeys blood, pigs blood, urine, feces even. Uh, so think about it. And as we discussed, the uh, fertilizer, you know, it's it's making things grow. It's <laughs> that's the most, uh, or that was the first ingredient at the uh, the fertilizer plant that I was talking about uh, earlier. So oh yeah, and then I mentioned before we went to break that. In the winter, everything is dead and brown, but where the dogs pee, it's green. <laughs> so, anyways, uh, l- let me ask you this, Andrew. Uh, one of our listeners uh, cured her morning sickness, uh, like, almost immediately when she started urine therapy. Do you have any thoughts on or as why that would happen? Um, all I can say is that, uh, I know another woman testified, and I, I've seen quite a bit of this, that when, and of course there again, it's a common thing that when women get pregnant, they glow, right? And everybody says, that, oh, you have such a glow about you. And what is that? Uh, well, I think it's light, and I think now you've got two light forces pulling in light into your body when you're pregnant. Um, and... So I know a woman also testified in Sacramento that uh, she was sickly her whole life. And before she knew about the still waters and urine therapy, uh, she had all kinds of complications with health. But every she, uh, she noticed every time she got pregnant, while she was pregnant, all of her health issues went away. So there's, it could be that there's more pure, you know, you got two, you got that large body of pure water floating around in there. Um, I really think it's more directly that there's two, there's two, uh, life forces inside one bodysuit at that time and you're channeling more light and that's why they, the common comment, you're glowing. We need to look at these things with a literal sense and realize that it's all this stuff that we've been told is invisible is actually right in front of our eyes, all this magic 
Uh, yeah. We actually use words to describe it all the time. All the time. Mm-hmm. Well, you talked about in the last show when you posted some really interesting research. Uh, I uh, really enjoyed when you were talking about how, like, the statues and, you know, water fountains and the old photos and, you know, the sculptures and everything. There's always little kids peeing in the fountain. <laughs> like the hidden fountain of youth. Um, what was that saint uh, that you had posted information about recently? Uh, Rio, I think. Uh, mm-hmm. Saint Uriel, yeah. Um, okay. And uh, Mark found that guy, and his his name is also uh, the alternate spellings for Saint Uriel are Saint Oriel and Saint Oriel, but either spelled O R I E L or A U R I E L, um, <clears throat> which are again references to light. Um, and what it's turning out, we're seeing this pattern of the sound or. Uh, and that's why we're saying it should be called Orin rather than Urin, uh, or it is proper description of, of Orin, of Urin is Orin because it refers to light and all, and organization and things of awesomeness. And, um, let's see, I had a post here that listed a bunch of things. Well, the Hebrew word for light is Or, um, Oracle, uh, the, the urine, the Greek word for urine is oron, spelled with an O-U, uh, an orchid, uh, an orchid is one of the most fabulous flowers, uh, to, to ordain means to place an order or arrange, uh, to orchestrate, uh, order, of course, and we got organic minerals. Nobody wants inorganic minerals. Why is, why do we want the organic ones? It's because they hold light. That's why we want the organic minerals. Mm-hmm. Um, and, of course, the Ouroboros, uh, the alchemist's most revered symbol, one of the oldest symbols on the entire planet, begins with the sound or, and it's a symbol of a snake eating its tail, which is friggin' flat out drinking your own urine. It doesn't get much more literal and in your face and obvious than the Ouroboros. And so it starts yeah. with the or sound, and so it doesn't matter if it's A-U-R or O-R, um, but the or sound... Re- refers to light and so orin is a light beverage uh, so that's why it's a great word for urine uh but nobody likes to say urine that's the, that's why it's, it's purposely the common word uh because it's a terrible sound when you say it like urine versus orin and even the word the sound the way you shape your lips to say yuck uh, that's the exact same starting point you make to say the word urine. Uh, so uh, it's very important that when you start seeing things uh, about St. Uriel uh, and that the alternate spellings for him are Oriel <laughs> and uh, St. Uriel, all the attributes of him were all these fantastic things that you can associate with urine and um I seem to be seeing these two things. The L sound seems to relate to light all the time, and the OR sound uh, seems to relate to light. And uh, there again, in the middle of the alphabet, we have L M N O. We have the M and the N, are N pushed together, make the ancient symbol for water. And what do we have on either side of water? And I'm saying that pure water channels light, that light force that you actually want. On the either side of the M and the N are the L and the O. The L sound and the O sound, the OR sound, organized. Light goes through water and organizes things. And that's written out in the middle of the alphabet, which uh, it turns out is looking like it's an actual a diagram of our journey from spirit down into matter and back up to spirit. The alphabet written out in a U shape is a one wavelength from peak to peak. Uh, and it seems like we're down in the middle of that dip right now. Um, and possibly even that light when used with the L sound, because the L seems like a, a male symbol and the O could be seen as a female symbol, uh, that we've been loaded and are heavy on the male energy as we descend out of spirit into matter. And as we go through the water here, it seems to be all this talk about the female energy coming. It may be that somehow light once it goes through water is organized and it has a feminine energy too. I don't know. I'm just kind of 
um, thinking out loud. But um, there's definitely something there to the uh, to the or. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, and, Andrew, um, we have probably like 45 seconds left, I think, okay. in tonight's show. So um, if there's any other important information uh, you wanted to get out there, uh, now is the time. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'll just wrap it up with gods and superheroes. Uh, the <laughs> god of light, talking about light, referring to Or, the god of lightning is the Or, Thor. Uh, and in superheroes, uh, Aquaman, Waterman, we're talking about water, his name at birth was Orin, O-R-I-N. Aquaman's original name is Orin. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so wow. it's just, oh, man. Uh, yeah, isn't that yeah. crazy? Uh, yeah, that so makes sense. <laughs> carry on, people. Keep drinking. Tell everybody. Tell grandma about it. Uh, even if you don't tell about the esoteric stuff, this is just about lighting people up. It's the best thing I know of. Uh, and I think as we keep getting smarter here and more enlightened and more intuition, more ideas are going to flow. Uh, but it seems to be that the water is the way to get the, the water wheel running. We need to. I agree, Andrew. Very well it. said. I am so sorry we're getting cut off right here. Thank you all for being here tonight. Blessings and love. Woo. We will see you tomorrow night. We're here.